Young astronauts, today your mission... Travelling beyond the Earth into deep space, exploring the ocean bed way beneath the waves. Anything is possible at Frogwell Primary School in Wiltshire. Who can tell me what part of the globe is the sea? Here they use an interlinked learning approach, which brings together the different subject areas across the curriculum under a general theme. Can you tell me what the other parts are? In this programme, we're going to look at two classes in detail to explore how interlinked learning works. Why did Frogwell School decide to adopt this approach? The attraction to interlinked learning is the whole idea that you can personalise the curriculum for the children of the, the school so that you then ha were linking together elements of learning which is how we all believe that children actually learn. The classrooms are transformed into stimulating environments which reflect the term's theme. Year 3's classroom is NASA Mission Control, complete with space shuttle, rocket and space suits. For this term, the children will be linking all their learning into Earth and beyond. Over in Carol Snowden's Year 1 class, the theme is Under the Sea. They go into another world. It becomes another world. It is not a classroom. And that's really just so exciting. Before the formal lesson starts, the children have the chance to investigate the different areas of the room. There's a puppet show where the rainbow fish fends off a shark attack, a role-play area with a rock pool by the seaside, a fishing area where they can catch the number fish, all designed to stimulate their imagination and provide a rich learning environment. Now I want you to think about our under the sea because it's time to start the formal lesson, which will bring together some of the children's previous learning the use of describing language and science and the geographical skills they've started to develop looking at physical and human features. In this lesson, the children are introduced to poetry for the first time. The jellyfish just loves to jiggle, which other fish think is quite dumb. She knows that it's not all that useful, but jiggling's very good. Oh. Well done all. Hey, what's special about this book? What can you hear in this book? Jasmine. A rhyme. You can hear rhyming. Shark. I swim with a grin up to greet you. See how my jaws open wide. Why don't you come a bit closer? Please take a good look inside. Never shake hands with a lobster. It isn't a wise thing to do. With a clippity-clap and a snippity-snap, he would snip all your fingers in. Oh, which word rhymes half or two? Two. Well done. Now I want you to look at this page. Physical features are features in our world and on a map which have always been there, which are part of the world. So an, e an example is the, s the, sa sand. the sand and, um, oh, I can see a s Seaweed, the plant life, that is part of the physical feature. And here is a rock. rock. They have always been there in the sea. But hang on, this shipwreck hasn't always been there. Who put that shipwreck there? Everybody. People. 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 So that is a human feature. Today, we are going to go under the sea and we are going to write an under-the-sea poem about the physical features. One of the main ways that we've been able to measure the impact of interlinked learning is through our parental questionnaires. And in 2005, 51% of parents actually said to us that their children enjoyed coming to school. In 2007, that had risen to 79%. And the main difference for our school was the fact that we'd introduced interlinked learning. I want you to imagine the sand right here in front of us. It's going through our fingers. Feel the sand. Soft. Light. Now we are going to taste the seawater. Only the really smart children.
What can you taste? Sand. Sa you can taste sand, can yeah. you? Ooh, what else can we taste in our seawater? So the seawater around our world is salt. salty. It's salty. We need some more physical features. So we're going to open our special treasure box. It's very demanding. It's hard work, but on the other hand, it's so much more rewarding. Everything links together. The children see what, what we're learning, why we're learning it, and where it's going to. Annabelle, I want you to close your eyes and feel the shell. How does it feel? Smooth. It's smooth. Feel this part here. How does it feel? Pointy. It's pointy. Really good words to use. I'm going to leave the shell here. I'm going to leave the stone here and our salty seawater. All of these physical features will help us write our poem. I want you to look at the interactive whiteboard on how we're going to write our poem. Here is our poem structure that we're going to use today, John Roy. And, I, and my first physical feature is going to be a rock. The... How do we spell the? Ta -ha -e. The rock. How do I spell rock? A curly car and a kicking car. The rock. Think of a really good describing word to describe the rock. Naomi. Oh, a brilliant word. I love it. Another describing word to describe my rock. Tommy. Strong. <gasps> Strong. Here is our first verse. Look carefully. The rock, the rough rock, the strong rough rock. Oh, that's sounding good. Shall we have our first about a shell? Let's have the shell. What you have to make sure of is that all areas of the curriculum are covered. So um, as a team, we've sat down together and actually looked at a two-year rolling programme and planned in where the geography might link in with the literacy, where the science might link in with the numeracy. So um, it takes forward planning, but once that is done, actually it's quite simple. You are going to write a poem following this structure but you are going to write not one, not two, but three, three verses. verses. Well remembered, three verses. Let's see how we go. Our first time ever being poets. The green seaweed. In a nearby classroom, Year 3 teacher Mandy Turner is at NASA Mission Control. Today your mission is to make a life-size model of your body using the correct measurements so that you can then design a spacesuit. Astronaut Aaron, could you go and get something from the space shuttle, please? It's on the chair. Within the Earth and Beyond theme, they're looking at the measuring and applying element of the national strategy for mathematics. So bring out Aaron, let's see what you've got. Let's see, what could it be? What do you think they might be? Um, a material to um, make a spacesuit. Make a spacesuit. What's wrong with this spacesuit? Doesn't have any arms and helmet. Nor helmet. Is it the right size? No. Is it the right shape? No. How could we get the right size and the right shape? We could get a bigger one and make one. We could make one. So, what are we going to learn today? Should we do with a hand clap? To measure yeah. and solve practical, practical problems. problems. What do you think we would need to help us get these measurements correctly on our piece of card? Young astronaut George. A tape measure. William. A pencil. Anything else? Some tape to stick it together. 
Who would like to wear one of these outfits? See what they feel like. The children are so motivated. They're eager to learn. They are questioning themselves about their own learning. They're investigating. They are just enthused. Now remember, in your pairs, who you're making the model of. Off to your mission. Elbow to shoulders, next. Show me. We need two holes for it. Two, go for it. With the practical side of the lesson over, it's time to reflect on how the children applied their measuring skills. OK, children, astronauts, your mission is now over. And I know you've been really, really busy trying to get your models made. And we've got one model that's been completed by Lydia and William. But let's first of all think about some of the things you may have had problems with. What problems did you come across? It came across some Uncle Fuffles because we sometimes um, we got one we got one of the things what we done wrong because we got it really we, we weighed the shoulders really big so then we had to start all over again. Okay. What problems did you come across, Matthew? Um. Um just in case you went over with the tape measure or ruler. So your measurement became too big or sometimes too small maybe? Well done. All right, now let's have a look at the model that Lydia and William have managed to complete. Lydia, you like to stand up? Lydia. Do we think this is a good fit with, um, model with Lydia? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Why do you think so? Um, every bit's where it's supposed to be, and um, it's all in the right order, what they did it in. Now, astronauts, did you have any problems making that model? Yes, because when we was going to make the shoulder bit, we got a bit that was too small, but then we had to add on a little bit at the end. So was your original measurement correct? No. So did you need to double check your measurements? Yep. Yeah. Well done. The children obviously so this enjoy this approach, but what about the teacher? It makes teaching exciting, it gives you a purpose, um, and it motivates you as a teacher. Do you think you're going to be able to make your spacesuits? Yes! yes! Well done, children. You've completed your mission. The two most rewarding elements of this approach are firstly the fact that children, staff and parents are so motivated and interested and actually engage in, in learning and want to be part of the process. And secondly, it's the fact that as a school we've got ownership of the curriculum, which means that we can actually fit it to how our children learn best. Okay,